Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. This is the show that loves to give back, like Cardi B gifting Offset $500,000 in cash for his birthday. You know what I'm saying? What else can I give somebody that got everything? The fridge. That's $500,000. Man, that's cold. That, that, was, that, was, that was good. All right, all right, let's start with some hot takes. But, but what is hot, really? What could I possibly say that would get viewers riled up in a way that I haven't before? I mean, I've already thrown a pair of Yeezys in the garbage. Doesn't get hotter than that in the sneaker world, especially since everybody is like, no, think of the resale. That was a long intro. My man George Kill visited the Michigan football facilities and he got to check out all sorts of fire Jordan retro exclusives that we've never seen before. Man, can't wait for George to check out the Cal Poly Pomona football. What? Oh, wait. Really? They don't have a football team. Really? You're gonna that's, do this. Th that's what you get for You're throwing in this. your school in last week's show, Juan. Kanye West is planning on opening a Yeezy sample lab in Cody, Wyoming, which would allow him to create and push product faster since the turnaround time for prototypes would be quicker. Besides the obvious benefit of bringing jobs to the US, that also means hypebeasts will start flocking to a flyover state instead of hanging around here in Los Angeles. Please take them all. Take them to the promised land with their anti-social social club hoodies that were cool like five years ago. Uh, Manchester United recently unveiled their dragon jersey for Chinese New Year, obviously. Like many of the top football clubs, United is trying to tap into the huge Chinese market with marketing attempts like this and partnering with Chinese conglomerates. Somewhere the NBA is like, yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Microsoft has revealed the name of their next console and it will be the Xbox Series X and it looks like something you talk to and find out what the traffic is like on the way to work. Still disappointed that I won't be able to call it the X Xbox shot A, but I'm also glad they didn't try to triple X the name and mess up my Google search, sorry, my Bing searches. Can't believe that's still a thing. Diddy turned 50 this past weekend, and while I'm sure my invitation just got lost in the mail, Diddy, <laughs> I was glad to see everybody from Pharrell to Beyonce to Jay-Z all pop up for the celebration. I also love these portraits on Diddy's IG, which were done by Kata with Vanity Fair. First up, we've got Jay making sure we see his 2.2 million Patek Philippe and shoes with the red bottoms. Meanwhile, I'm happy I just got a new Apple Watch. Then here's Kim and Kanye hoping to convince everybody that a move to Cody, Wyoming is great for the brand. We've got Mary J. Blige looking great as always. Uh, that's. Cardi B and Offset trying to remember if they left the fridge open. And then there's Usher getting ready to greet Xbox a Merry Christmas again. Merry Christmas, Xbox. Lizzo looks relieved to not be canceled after what happened at Staples last week. Chadwick Boseman is just glad he's at a party where nobody will ask him to do the Wakanda forever. Oh, never mind, actually. There's two people. And finally, there's Snoop Dogg, looking like he wants to reprise his character in Def Jam Fight for New York. And Jaden Smith is the tutorial hype beast you beat up on to test your finishing moves. I'll see them all at Diddy's 50 first maybe my invite you know we'll get here by then so the NFL is fawning over its new breakout star no it's not whoever caught the New England Patriots cheating allegedly again nah it's Lamar Jackson Baltimore Ravens quarterback and answer to the question is Joe Flacco elite because Flacco is elite Lamar would still be on the bench and pundits would be wondering why won't he switch to wide receiver Jackson has been spectacular on the field both as a passer and as a runner becoming only the second quarterback to rush for 1,000 yards in a season the first another phenom named Michael Vick it's no wonder he's garnered the most votes for the Pro Bowl the NFL all-star game that no player cares about but gets bitter about when they don't get invited he's the front runner for the league's MVP award and if everything breaks right they have a clear path to the Super Bowl and he's doing this in just his second season as a quarterback last year we were ready to give the title of the league's top star to Kansas City's Patrick Mahomes but now Jackson is staking that claim but there's a key difference between Mahomes and Jackson everywhere you go there's a Patrick Mahomes commercial that's just begging you to share them on social it can be head and shoulders State Farm direct TV and now he's going to be the face of US Adidas football Oh, and Mahomes is already a Madden athlete, the third youngest player to grace the cover. The youngest, Mike Vick. Jackson has a clothing line called Era 8 that features an African wild dog and its logo and raises money and awareness for the endangered species. Huh, I'm just gonna slide over here and just talk about something else because this shouldn't be about Mike Vick. So while Mahomes is running laps around Jackson in the endorsement game so far, Lamar and his family are looking to lay low for now 
and focus on the season before potentially cashing in big this spring. As a public service to Nike, Jordan, and Under Armour, I would like to speak for both you and say sign this man and give him the bag. Yes, I understand the NFL players haven't transcended into global icons in the same way that they would if they played basketball or soccer or even golf. But like Mahomes, Jackson has a great chance to be that star because he plays the game in ways that we haven't seen since a young Mike Vick. It's almost insulting to call Jackson a video game character because you can't even do half of the stuff he does in Madden. And when they do catch up in next year's game, he's going to break out with something new that will dominate the highlights for a solid week. Back in the 90s, Nike football had an amazing roster of athletes from Barry Sanders to Deion Sanders to Dan Marino to Steve Young to Jerry Rice. Under Armour struck gold with Cam Newton, but injuries are starting to slow him down. It's time for the next generation, and Lamar Jackson will be that guy who leads it along with Mahomes. But unlike Mahomes, Jackson has a built-in narrative of a guy who was infamously told he should switch to receiver because some thought he wouldn't cut it as quarterback. That's like Portland picking Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan levels of disrespect there. Imagine the commercials Nike could run just based on the premise or the hype videos Under Armour would create as Cam and Tom Brady hand over the crown to Jackson. I want to believe these brands are already preparing marketing decks and signature trainer designs to show Jackson whenever they decide to meet, but I'm still gonna say out loud so everybody can hear it. Sign this man. Christmas week is here and it's got some releases that you might want to keep your phone out for just in case, you know, the family conversation turns to politics. First up, we have uh, December 25th with the uninterrupted Nike LeBron 17 more than an athlete. These will likely be the pair that LeBron wears on Christmas day as uh, he continues to spread the word of his endeavors beyond the basketball court. Uh, December 27th, we have the undefeated Nike Air Max 90. This, so this full collection, it kind of looks like that it's going to be very like Supreme-esque. It has that feel to it. It's like, it's, it's a little under Stated. Can't go wrong with an Air Max 90 though, so definitely pick those up if you're into it. On December 27th, we have the Nike Dunk SB Low Ray Gun Tie Guy. Now, uh, for those that don't know, Sandy Bodeker, he is the founding father of Nike SB, and with this special Ray Gun SB Dunk, it has a tie dye pattern on it that represents a hoodie that uh, Sandy used to wear. So if you're into SBs, this is probably something you should cop just for like the whole nostalgia and the history of those. Uh, December 28th, we have the Air Jordan 6 Wash Denim. Now, these don't appear to have that. Levi's cosign, so the hype for these shouldn't be as crazy as we'd expect, but it could be a little crazy, I'll say. I can't wait to see uh, the customs that come out of this after seeing what everybody did with their Levi Jordan 4s. I still haven't done it with mine. I need to get on that. And then our pick of the week is the Nike KD12 What the Aunt Pearl. These drop on December 26th. Uh, KD's tribute to his late aunt continues with the Nike KD12 release that borrows from the past Aunt Pearl KDs, but retains the vibrant pink colorway. It might be the best KD we've seen so far. I feel like they used to do these in February. Now yeah, it seems yeah, like it's a little Christmas, sooner. Yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah, it's early. All right. <laughs> It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like this Machino backpack designed by Jeremy Scott. It looks like it could fit Cardi B's present to offset in there if the present were in dollar bills. That thing is huge. Anyway, uh, this week's Hard Pass goes to the NBA's current sneaker policy, or really, the lack of the NBA's current sneaker policy. You might remember a time when the league actually enforced some rules when it came to the kicks that players wore on the court. Hell, Michael Jordan and Nike made billions of dollars off these draconian rules back in the day because there was a sense of mystery and danger to wearing shoes that were not allowed by the league. Just imagine if MJ had played in today's NBA, would the Air Shift or the Air Jordan 1 be as noteworthy without the band commercial? Nowadays, in an effort to promote player free them and creativity, the rules regarding footwear have lacks to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if someone wore Timberlands on the court. And, I, and you know, really, I'm looking at you, Patrick Beverly. You can wear just about anything on the court these days, regardless of shoe brand or color. Just ask PJ Tucker, who has parlayed his sneaker game into his personal brand. He gets more attention from the sneaker culture than guys like Steph Curry, Paul George, and Damian Lillard, who actually have their own signature basketball shoes. And while I will always encourage players to wear what they like if it it makes them feel comfortable and empowered and play better. I just wish they would match the uniforms every once in a while. It's just jarring to see some of these like sneakers on the court sometimes. It can be Russell Westbrook rocking some Mighty Duck themed Jordans in a Houston Rockets uniform or Montrez Harrell wearing Nike LeBron 11 Oregon PEs for the Clippers. Like how can you have a sneaker moment when everybody is trying to have a sneaker moment? It's like when the NFL thought it would be a good idea to finally let their players wear custom cleats on the field as part 
of their My Cleats My Cause program. This is the same league that will tell Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry to switch out of their custom cleats every week of the season, but let them do whatever they want for just one week. Everybody's going to try and stand out and let their cause be heard through their cleats, which is awesome. But there's only so much a fan or a sneakerhead in my case can see before it just becomes noise and Right now, much of the NBA sneaker game is just noise. As an old man yelling from the sneaker clouds, it would be great if the players were just a little more judicious, big word there, when they decide to wear something like the LeBron 8 South Beach or the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s on the court. When everybody is looking to stand out for their style on the court, an NBA game can start to look like sneaker con, and I don't know if that's really a good thing. Because like sneaker con, the most shocking pair you see on the floor might not be the super rare player exclusive that only Fat Joe and Mark Wahlberg have ever seen, but rather an under the radar GR that turns heads or a shoe that's simply over five years old. I'm not asking for the return of the 80s where nobody could wear outlandish colorways that don't match their uniforms right down to the shade of purple and or gold, but what I am asking is that the pendulum swing just a little bit back. So the hard pass this week, it's the NBA's sneaker policy, but it's more of a soft pass. Like, yeah, soft pass. Like that should be the alternate name of this segment when we take a look at something in the culture that kinda needs to go, but maybe not all the way. I don't know. I don't know, we'll workshop that next year. No, we're not. Yeah, maybe. All right, uh, that's gonna do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching the last proper hard pass of the year. We do have one more episode that's more of a recap of the year, so make sure you be on the lookout for that soon. I'm Jacques Slade, and I'll see you next time, but not before I show you the penis. Nope, I, I'm not going to show you that. Uh, we're not gonna look at that because I wanna keep this channel clean, so uh, instead, here's a giant raven flying through the air in Baltimore and freaking everybody out because People thought it was real. AR ain't no joke, people. AR is serious. All right, see you guys next week. Peace.